Hi students, this is your 5.6 lesson on proving equivalence. All right. So your learning goal is that you are going to be able to prove algebraically that two algebraic expressions are equivalent. So that's gonna be our goal today. And I do want you to refresh your knowledge um, in your PDF on page four there are some properties of exponents. So if we have a product of two powers with the same base, we keep the base and we add the exponent. So x cubed times x to the fifth would then be x to the eighth. And if we have a quotient with two powers with the same base, we keep the base and we subtract the exponents. So if we had x to the ninth over x to the fifth, that would be then x to the fourth. If we have a power raised to an exponent, we multiply those two exponents. So x squared to the third would be x to the sixth. And then we also have these properties with negative exponents that says if I have x to a negative exponent, that's the same as one over x to that positive exponent. So let's say I had x squared over x to the negative third. In this case, I could just switch position and make this, put this um, power into the numerator and have it be a positive three, which would then give us x to the fifth because we have an x squared already in the numerator and then three more x's join it to create that x to the fifth. So switching position from numerator to denominator will switch the sign of the exponent. On page four in your, in your packet, there's lots of little practice and the key is posted. So just make sure that you're really confident with your exponent properties. Okay, so for our criteria for success, what we're going to try to do is choose a single side to manipulate. So we're just going to mess around with one of the two sides and then we'll perform a single algebraic manipulation and write down the reason. We'll continue doing this one step at a time until we actually reach our goal. Once we prove the two expressions are equivalent, you are then finished with your proof. Okay, so strategy one is to use exponent properties. Okay, so we want to prove that these two things are equal. Now, I we wrote down here that they are equal, but your job is to prove that it is so. We are only going to mess with one side, and I'm going to pick this side to mess around with. We're going to do one step each time, and every time we do a manipulation, we will write down the reason. Okay. So if I want to start here, I'm going to look at the x minus 6, and this is on, excuse me, page 22 in your packet. The factor x minus 6, I have 4 here and I have 3 here. So I could go ahead and use those exponent properties to cancel those out. So that would leave me with a single x minus 6 to the first in the numerator. And then I'm going to write everything else exactly the same. I'm not going to mess with anything else yet. So I'm going to say that I went from this first one to this one, and I used exponent properties. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other factor, which is x plus 2. So I know that I have x plus 2 to the negative 4th in the numerator. I can bring that to the denominator and have it be to the positive 4th. So the next line I'm going to write is x minus 6 over x plus 2 to the 5th. And my reason is going to be negative exponent property. Okay, so for this, 
um, we'll go ahead, we get to the bottom here and we're keeping our eye on the prize. So this is what we're looking for, okay? We want it to be equivalent. So since I finally see that, I'm gonna say that this is actually equal to my right side, x minus six times x plus two squared, or sorry, to the fifth, and I'm gonna write a check mark. So I was able to get the two sides to become equivalent. Now there wasn't much to this, and the beginning ones we do, are gonna be fairly simple. You'll do a couple of manipulations, write down the reasons, and be good to go. Now, toward the end of this, um, we have two days of this actually, This and toward the end of the second day, all the different strategies will be mixed together, and you get to choose the path you take. There's no perfect way to do these. So some will take a little longer than others, and some will be more straightforward, and you'll have all the different strategies to use at once. Okay, so there's two problems here that you can go ahead and try. And so for this first one, if you wanna pause me and try it, you can go for it. If you want to work with me, that's fine too. But I see right now that the two X minus three here will end up canceling. So I'm gonna write X minus one on the top, X minus one to the negative third in the denominator and two X minus three cubed in the denominator here as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and say here, my reason is exponent properties. Okay, uh, then we're gonna go ahead and do the same with the x minus one. I notice I have this negative third. If I bring that up to the numerator, I already have one here, it will become to the fourth power. So my next line would be x minus one to the fourth over two x minus three to the third. Always keeping, oopsies, always keeping my eyes on the prize here. Here is what I'm looking to match. And right now I can see that I did match it. So my reason here, I'm gonna say negative property of exponent. And then now I'm gonna do my big ta-da here at the end. I'm gonna say, hey, the left side, it actually does equal the right side. So I'm gonna have this equality statement at the end with my check mark to say, yep, I got the left side to be exactly the same as the right side. Therefore, the original two, this is actually equivalent to the right side. Okay. So for the next one, and again, I've been choosing the left sides. I typically do that unless I see something much different. So I'm gonna kind of keep rolling with that. Um, for this, I'm gonna deal with this part first. So I'm gonna rewrite one over x squared plus, and now I'm going to um, put five over x squared. I'm gonna do the reciprocal. So you can say something um, about negative property of exponents, okay? And then from here, I can go ahead and bring in that squared. So I'm gonna say one over x squared equals, or sorry, not equals, pardon me, plus 25 over x squared, and that would be because of just properties of exponents or exponent properties, either way is fine. Okay, so that brought in that squared, and now we're able to combine these two. So I would say 26 over x squared, and we are just combining like terms. And that's our reason, what did we do? How did we get 26 over? x squared, we added these two, we combined like terms. And now finally I can say, hey, I did it. I kept my eye on the prize, which is what I'm trying to match, and I did match it, which means I've proved the equivalence. Okay, strategy number two is divide. And some of these are gonna just seem so basic, and they kind of are, but they're little strategies that we can um, use to break things apart, build things up, and again, we're looking to use algebra to prove that these two sides are exactly the same. They certainly don't look the same. And that's what we're trying to do, use algebra so that we can get one side to look identical to the other. That's how we prove the equivalence. So division. 
This is um, what I call math is love. I think I stole that from Mrs. Shulton. And I actually met who is now my husband in math class. So you never know. Valentine's Day is coming up. Could be a math love connection. All right. So we have 12x divided by 2x minus 30 over 2x. So what did I do? I just split the fraction. I actually just divided. Okay. So we can write here that we divided or you could say you could say split the fraction. Oops. Fraction or divide. Okay. Okay, so from here, we're going to go ahead and reduce. So when we do that, we're looking, we see the x on the top and the bottom. So we're able to go ahead and do some canceling here. The 2 goes into here once and into here six times. So this becomes, oops, this will be 6. Okay, so far so good if I'm looking at the right side. That's looking really promising. And I'm going to do the same thing on here. This will be the same reason. So I am going to go ahead and do this here as well. Okay, so the reason I'm going to use here is I'm going to say reduce or make ones. Now, how do you make one? If you have something over itself, you make one. So in this case, we have um, the 12x over 2x. The x over the x is really just saying 1. And the 12 is 2 times 6 over 2. Well, here's 2 over 2. That's another 1. So if you can get the factor over itself, it will always make the number 1. Anything times 1 is itself. Okay, so that's really what we're doing when we are reducing. Okay, so this second one here would be minus 15 over x. And that's exactly what we were trying to accomplish. So on this line, we say this is equal to 6 minus 15 over x. Check mark, we got it. So our, our first strategy here was dividing or splitting the fraction. Then we reduced or make 1. So you can use any of those, you know, either or is fine. Okay, so here's one to try. So we have the two terms in the numerator divided by 9. So what we can do is we can, again, split that fraction. So we're going to write 18x over 9 minus 21 over 9. Now you're going to be very tempted. So again, I can say divide or split the fraction. You're going to be very tempted to jump right into 2x minus 7 thirds. And even though that's absolutely correct, you're doing a proof. So you will be justifying these little swoops on the right. This is your justification. So you're going to do one justification per line. Okay, so this first justification, why were we allowed to break this apart? That was because of division. Okay, dividing um, two terms by a value, we can actually split it into two different fractions. Then we're going to go ahead and we can uh, cancel out a 9, a factor of 9 in the numerator and denominator here. We can factor out, let's see, 3. Oh, that was, we can do a 3 top and bottom, a factor of 3. So the next line is going to read 2x minus 7 thirds. And the reason for that is going to be, um, we're going to reduce or make ones. So again, finding that common factor in the numerator and denominator allows me to cancel. So we see this is what we were trying to get. So once again, this is showing that we can prove the left side is equivalent to the right side. All right, last strategy we're gonna look at in this lesson is expand and factor. Expand and factor. So we want to prove again that the left side is the same as the right side. They don't look the same. So we're going to do some algebra steps to actually make this look identical. If we can do that, we know they're equivalent. If we can't, then either we made a mistake or they're actually not equivalent. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to expand this. This we know is actually x plus 3 times x plus 3. And you can go ahead and use the area model if you'd like. But we'll get x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus x squared all over 3. So our reason for this, so to go from here to here, I would say, what did I do? I expanded. I multiplied those, this x plus 3 times itself, and I expanded it. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to combine like terms. And when I do that, I get an x squared take away x squared. So when I combine like terms, I get 6x plus 9 all over 3. And that's going to be my reason. What did I do? I combined like terms. Okay, and that's how those x squared and the negative x squared, how they're gone. Now from here, I am going to go ahead and split my fraction. Again, look at what we're trying to get to. We want 2x plus 3. So 6x over 3 plus 9 over 3. Okay, so what did I do? I divide, or we can say split the fraction. Okay, now from here, when I split that fraction, I can see, let me get a different color here, I can see 3 goes into here once and into here twice, into here once, into here three times. So my final is going to be 2x plus 3. My reasoning for that is that I went ahead and reduced, or we can say make ones. And finally, we're able to say the left side, which we just found, is equivalent to 2x plus 3. So remember, one step per line. You're going to justify every single thing you do. There's a reason for why you're doing it. This is going to be the harder part, is actually writing the words to match the work you know how to do. Okay, last one here. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and expand. Look how small we're getting this, right? It's just going to be x minus 4. So we got to figure something out to clean some of this up. So I am going to expand. This becomes x squared minus 4x plus 4. Use that area model if you need it. Totally fine. And my reason here, what did I do to get to this line? I expanded. Now, I know I can combine some things. So I see oh, 4x and negative 4x. Okay, those are going to be gone. And I can combine these two. So let's see what this is going to look like. x squared minus 16 all over x plus 4. Okay, so this is looking nicer. So we again, we want it to look like this x minus 4. So we, we got to kind of trim it down a little bit. So this is because we combined like terms. All right, so I have a quadratic on top, a linear piece on the bottom. Um, I'm not allowed to cancel unless I have a like factor. I do see that I can actually factor that numerator. The numerator factors into x minus 4 times x plus 4, and that's over x plus 4. Again, use that area model if you'd like to, absolutely fine. My reason is... I just factored. So I saw the x squared minus 16 and I wrote it as a product. Now look what we can do. x minus 4 over x minus 4. One factor over itself is just 1. So I'm left with x minus 4. And the reason behind this is I reduced. And you can also say that I make 1s. And now finally, we're able to say x minus 4 on the left equals that x minus 4 on the right. And that is justified. So we'll definitely practice some more and we're going to learn at least two more strategies. But for this next class, we're just going to focus on these.